Welcome back to another Black Sun Syndicate video review for the Star Wars Destiny game. Uh, I am your host, Bradley Reeves. So today, we're going to go over the yellow cards. Uh, the rogues, or the scum and villainy, if you will. <coughs> um, so this first card up is... Uh, Balatik, he is a villain card. He has 8 health, which um, I guess I had the, the health numbers wrong. It looks like 8 is the lowest for a unique character. Um, uh, he costs 8 for a normal version and 11 for a elite version. Um, he has 2 damage sides, a 1 ranged and a plus 2 ranged. Uh, a focus, a shield, a resource, and a blank. And after your opponent's character is defeated, you may ready this character. Um, um, <clears throat> he's very cheap for uh, a, an elite, unique character. Um, uh, he, his his ability is trait and that to be able to ready him if uh, after an opponent's character is defeated uh, let, letting you get another swing in potentially is very strong um, this is not a card that I have uh, tested with uh, as of yet he was one of the one of the last cards spoiled from the game uh, but he certainly certainly has potential um, he's in my opinion he's better in a meta game where and where you're where players are playing three or maybe even four characters um, so you can get more than one additional use out of him um, what worries me about him unfortunately is he's only got two damage sides and one of them is restrictive um, uh, so and he his eight health is again the lowest of any unique currently in the game so it's uh, his he has some he has some he does have some potential uh, but I'm afraid that the between the statistics and the uh, number of damage sites that he has by himself he's really going to need um, he's really going to need better uh, good upgrades on him to make him very useful now because the numbers are a little lower his cost makes him very affordable so if you wanted to run like a three character, um, uh, run a three character deck, you could run a copy of him, uh, Balatik Elite, with a couple of Tuscan Raiders. We'll get to him and we'll get to him shortly. Um, um, so you can certainly put. More, you can certainly put a good number of dice on the table with him, uh, but I'm still not a hundred. I'm not sure where he really fits. Maybe if he had another restricted damage side, um, if he had a a one, a plus one, and a plus two, uh, I would be a little more interested because he he really seems to be with that ability. He could be a very big machine gun. You know, finish off a character, straighten him, re-roll the dice in the pool. So, uh, being able to get multiple uses is what gives is makes his power level potential high. Um, but unlike some of the other power characters in the game, you have to put more. Um, you, you start having to pile upgrades on him to make him worth that ability. 
which is which is perfectly fine. Um, again, I'm not. Uh, it's not a guy that I have currently tried, so most of this is uh, speculation. Um, uh, but uh, for a rare, he certainly he he certainly seems powerful in a vacuum. Um, once he's stacked with uh, with upgrades. So Jabba the Hutt is a uh, a villain legendary has 11 health. Again, this is a uh, little above average. Um, cost 11 for a normal and 14 for a unique or elite version. Um, his dice two different focus sides, uh, a two disrupt, a two discard, a resource, and a blank. And after you activate this character, you may re-roll a yellow die. Um, so, uh, to me, Jabba is a is more of a secondary character. He's not designed to be your your main character. Um, Jabba is one that is designed to. Uh, help you towards your end goal, uh, control your opponent. He's not, he's nothing real flashy. Um, the two different fo uh, focus sides let you change your die results to what you want. The two disrupt and the two discard are huge uh, as far as um, helping control the opponent as <clears throat> as can be his trait. Uh, when you activate him, you may reroll a yellow die. This could be yours, or this could be your opponent's. Um, so, if your opponent is playing Finn or Han, um, or even a hired gun, something of that nature, you can force him to reroll their die. Um, it's just the crime boss that Jabba is. Um, so, I think he's. He's an effective uh, secondary character designed for your control aspect. Um, legendary, I'm not sure if... Uh, I know that they made certain characters legendary over rares in the set. I'm not really sure if he's a legendary uh, as far as from a, anything except a flavor aspect. Um, so, uh, okay, so let's get, let's get some muscle in here. So Django Fett is a, uh, a unique villain character, has 10 health. Uh, his normal costs 12, his elite costs 16. Uh, he has three different damage sides, one ranged, two ranged, and one melee. Uh, two resource sides, a one and a plus one, and a blank. Um, what makes jo uh, Django powerful is his trait. After an opponent activates a character, you may activate this character. So, literally, uh, Django gives you a free action. You get the ability to activate him after an opponent's character activates, and then you get your normal action. Um, like I previously stated in some of my other videos, which you can check out in the descriptions below, um, when you get multiple actions... Uh, in a game where the game is dictated one action at a time, one for you, one for your opponent, it creates um, tempo swings in your favor or, uh, where you can swing a game back from losing or swing a game completely out of your opponent's control. Um,
it's something I have dealt with in other games. Um, now L5R had certain cards that gave you additional actions <coughs> during battle um, where you could take multiple a consecutive actions. Um, there was a card in that game called Blackened Skies that allowed you to um, take any number of additional actions to do ranged attacks. So you could literally decimate an opponent's board before they get another action. You know, you're taking three, four, five, six actions and they're like, uh, um, what do I do? You know, half my board's gone now. Um, <clears throat> these type of effects are, are something I look for. Um, now three damage size is quite strong, although um, two and one damage are, are not very high on damage output. So he's a guy that you, with this ability, you definitely want to be full up on um, uh, upgrades so that you're rolling, you know, uh, four or five dice into the pool at once with him so you get so you can get maximum damage from a character like Django. Uh, I expect to see a lot of Django. Um, his costs are uh, fairly fairly cheap. Uh, 16 for an elite is is fairly cheap uh, right now. Um, and you know previously we just talked about Jabba Fett. Uh, Jabba Fett. Uh, Boba Fett. <coughs> Jabba, F Jabba the Hutt. Lord, I'm, I'm really bricking today. Um, we're just talking about Jabba. You can actually run an elite Jabba, elite Django deck. Um, Jabba controls your opponent while Django beats them into submission. All right, so uh, again, I pardon, uh, apologize for some of the images. Um, um, some of them aren't as clear as I would like them to be, but uh, I had to go with what I had. Uh, so this is Tuscan Raider. It's the non-unique villain rare in the set. He has uh, a base of eight health. It costs nine. Um, the Tuscan Raider has three damage sides, one ranged, one melee. Three melee for a resource, a shield, a resource, and a blank. Um, what makes the Tuscan Raider dangerous and special is his trait of after you activate this character, you may discard a card from your hand to resolve one of its character or upgrade dice. So again, this is another card that causes a tempo swing. Um, it costs you a card out of your hand, which, um, if you're, if you're playing, uh, more aggressive style decks, <clears throat> you really, you're, you don't really care that much about having to discard the card. You're trying to get your opponent dead as fast as possible. Um, but being able to resolve, immediately resolve a die after you activate the character, again, is to me taking two consecutive actions. And... When you're playing uh, in a game with one action, then the, uh, your action, then your opponent's action, uh, being able to roll a die result that you want and then immediately resolve it means your opponent has no chance whatsoever of interacting with it. And that, is, that type of tempo swing is something you look for. I expect to see Tuscan Raider uh, quite a bit. Especially early when people don't have all the cards that they want or all the stuff that they want to experiment. Uh, but I expect to see him later simply because of this ability. Um, being able to auto uh, auto resolve a die is is pretty nuts. Alright, so next up is Crime Lord. It is a villain upgrade for four resources. It is a legendary. Um... This dice has six sides with no blanks, two focus, three disrupt for a resource, two shield, two resources, and 
Um, it has a special ability on two sides. It's a yellow character only. Uh, special. Spend five resources to choose a character. That character is defeated after this round ends. Um, so this card is dangerous uh, for multiple reasons. You know, most most games have some sort of um, removal ability. Uh, it was called Lot Assassin and the uh, in L five R. Um, uh, terror, Swords to Plowshare, stuff like that in Magic. Um, this is a dangerous card simply because you get to kill off a character no matter what its health is at uh, in one shot. So while this card is very flavorful, it shows how expensive an ability like this would be in Destiny. Uh, because once your characters die, the game's over. Uh, nine resources is a lot. Four for the ability, and uh, or four for the upgrade, and five for the ability. The um, while the upgrade cost can be mitigated, it's the special abilities cost that right now there isn't a way to mitigate any of that. Um, I expect some players to try to make this card work because it is, it has such a powerful ceiling. Oh, Vader's, uh, you know, killing off, being able to kill off a Vader with no damage on it, or, or a Qui-Gon, or a Luke, um, is just a powerful effect. Now, how many decks this is going to show up in, how many decks you can reliably get all of the pieces to is yet to be seen. So next up is Flamethrower. It is a uh, upgrade weapon for villains only, rare. Uh, it's three resources. It has uh, three damage sides. It has a two melee, a four melee for a resource and a special ability that deals damage. It also has a disrupt, a, a resource, and a blank. The special is deal one damage to uh, each to up to three different characters. Um, now flamethrower, that's, uh, that's some powerful outputs, either two, three, or four damage, depending on um, what your role and how many characters your opponent has. Um, now, since it is a flamethrower, instead of dealing range damage, it deals melee because you have to be up close to use it. Okay. Um, both the Tusken Raider and um, Django, both have a, both have ma have a melee damage side on their card. Now, I, I have been liking, especially in aggressive decks, to match sides on e both equip on um, upgrades and uh, characters if I possibly can, so that you can resolve all of those dice simultaneously um, to get a a huge amount of damage through at one time so that you're again that's another way that you can um, circumvent some of your opponent's tricks uh, being able to resolve multiple dice at once um, allows you to get more damage through it's if you resolve them because you can resolve dice multiple dice of the same side at, at one time um, so it's like taking multiple actions at once. Uh, flamethrower's output is ex is is great, uh, extremely heavy. Um, it so it deals a lot. Uh, it's certainly a card I would look at uh, for rogue decks, especially decks that are running Tuscan Raider and or Django Fett. Mm -hmm. 
So next up is another villain upgrade weapon. It's a gaffy stick, a rare, cost two. Um, it has uh, three different damage sides. Uh, first one is two melee damage for a uh, resource, plus two melee damage. Um, a disrupt a um, resource and a blank. And then the special ability, <coughs> which is remove one of your dice showing melee damage to deal three damage to a character. Uh, this card also has redeploy. Again, uh, the, uh, <coughs> this card concentrates on melee damage. Again, I'm one that likes to match my damage outputs together if at all possible. If at all possible. So, um, the, um, there are certain decks that are going to fit this better in than others. This fits real well on the, on both Django and with, um, the Tuscan Raider. It fits less well with your other characters. So, um, the damage output is quite good. Two, two, and three are are really good for for an, for an upgrade, and it has redeploy, so it can slide over. So, um, again, this is a card you have to put in the correct deck to make effective, because of the for me the damage output sides and the special ability. So, um. On the hunt, this is a one-cost villain upgrade ability. It is a rare. Uh, it has um, uh, one range, plus one range, plus one melee. And discard two different special sides and a blank. The special side reads: Remove all shields from a character. You may spend one resource to remove one of its character or upgrade dice. This is the. Uh, this is an ultimate control card for uh, for yellow in upgrade form. Um, in a especially in a shield heavy environment, you know we were talking about Qui Gon decks earlier. Um, you're also going to see uh, some very high shield producing cards in yellow. Um, so that alone. Just the all removing shields is it is it can be a big boon uh, if you're trying to be aggressive. Then being able to pay a resource to remove one of the dice that's in the pool for them is absolutely nuts. Gives you multiple control options out of this. So this is certainly an upgrade that I would want. Um, being able to a permanent being able to deal with an opponent's dice with the bonus of removing all shields from that character um, yeah I would be looking for this if I'm playing yellow now to the hero side Finn uh, is a starter deck only character uh, costs or he uh, he costs 13 for a normal 16 for a unique uh, has 10 health three damage sides uh, one ranged two ranged one melee uh, one shield one um, resource one uh, one blank um, so three different damage sides is nice um, he has a couple of traits which um, break some fundamental rules of the game. Uh, you can attach uh, any weapon to this character ignoring play restrictions. So he doesn't care what the... Uh, any. He can pick up any weapon and fire it. Um, you can include red villain weapons and vehicles in your deck. Okay. So, you know, we talked about Poe Dameron earlier. And 
really the only deck um, that can give you enough vehicles uh, to get the get a maximum amount out of uh, uh, Poe is um, somebody like Finn who can import um, villain side care stuff like the Atsat, First Order TIE Fighter, etc. Um, he it's uh, it's, uh, it's interesting they put this in a starter deck because typically this type of card is a complex card which would normally be a rare uh, but they intentionally built both of those uh, starter decks around the Force Awakens uh, so that it tied uh, Poe and Finn with Kylo and the First Order Stormtrooper um, sort of embeds that memory it's uh, of this is the classic battle between hero and villain light and dark side etc uh, and I think they did a good job at representing uh, what each of those characters could do um, most of the decks I've seen Finn in so far has been um, Finn Poe um, but as the game continues there are going to be more options and he may be a being able to import villain weapons and red villain weapons and, and uh, vehicles into your deck is something that only grows with time so it gives light side access to cards it normally would not have Han Solo. So Han is a light side character or hero character. Um, 10 health. He had cost 14 for a ba uh, normal version and 18 for an elite. So Han's dice, he has two ranged, three ranged for a resource, two disrupt, two separate um, resources, and a blank. After you play a card with an the ambush keyword, you may give this character one shield. So earlier in some other videos, um, I talked about a shield heavy metagame. Um, Qui-Gon is one of those characters that's shield heavy and so is Han Solo. Even though he does not have a die that gives shields normally, he has this trait which paired with the all of the cards that we're going to see <coughs> um, that has the ambush keyword is huge amounts of protection and tempo. Um, you're going to see a lot of Han Solo. Um, he has again high damage output uh, with a two and a three for a for a uh, resource. Even though that's just on two sides, um, his um, he's going to be a very tough nut to crack. Next up is Hired Gun. Again, I apologize for the uh, the uh, quality of the image. Hired Gun is a hero-only character. 9 health for 8. Um, he has um, uh, 2 ranged for a resource, 3 ranged for a resource, 1 disrupt, and 2 separate uh, resource sides as well as a blank. Um, so he he has some high damage outputs but it's going to cost you for it. 
Um, if you can find a deck or a way to mitigate those resource costs on those uh, uh, on those specific dice, um, he looks like he could be a fairly powerful non-unique character for heroes. Um, uh, those two sides lend toward more of an aggressive deck, but since they are going to cost resources, you're going to have to find a way around that resource cost one way or another. Luckily there is a battlefield that helps with that. Um, and there are a couple other cards that, that can allow you to gain resources um, uh, that will be helpful in getting that, uh, uh, helping you be able to pay those costs when you need it. Pa Padme Amidala, Queen of Naboo. So she is a hero character, rare. She has 10 health. Um, costs are 10 for a normal, 14 for an elite. Uh, she has um, a 2 focus, 1 discard, 1 resource, 2 special sides, and a blank. Uh, her special side reads, discard the top card of an opponent's deck, or spend 1 resource to discard the top 2 cards of an opponent's deck. Okay, so... To me, <coughs> this is the support style character on the white side that says this is a build around me card. Um, this is the card that inherently is a mill strategy. Um, you want to keep her alive as long as possible to uh, run your opponent out of cards. Now having two special sides and her elite being 14 um, you've got two dice with two chances you know with two sides each to be able to hit the special twice in the same turn um, milling two or four cards off their deck is is huge in a game where you're drawing back up to your hand size at the end of each turn um, there's also another uh, some more cards um, uh, that we'll see later that also help with this objective. Um, so this is sort of the the uh, lack of a magic better term. I'll use the magic term of a Johnny card, a card that you want to build around. Uh, I've been trying the Qui Gon Padme deck because um, that type of that level of protection is pretty nuts. So next up, we get into the hero support cards. Uh, first is the unique Millennium Falcon. <coughs> um, the Falcon has no blank sides. It has a 3 ranged, a 4 ranged, 2 focus, 3 discard, 2 resource, and a special. The special is play an event, a yellow event from your discard pile or hand for free. Um, We'll get into the, the yellow events later. Um, what um, the only the only decks that I've really seen the Falcon in so far have been Poe decks because um, being able to discard a Falcon uh, and resolve a four damage side is pretty crazy. Or you know the three discard side. Um, the cost uh, of supports is what is worrying. Five is a lot. Um, no natural way to to decrease their costs. Uh, so, uh, upgrades have, of course, the the effect that you can use to to decrease costs. Supports don't have that. So um, certainly, from a flavor aspect, it is uh, a legendary card. 
uh, but right now I don't see a lot of decks it fits in. Um, it's just uh, it's its potential is scary. I think that's the reason the cost was so high, similar to what the ad set was for the dark side or villains. All right, diplomatic immunity. Um, so four cost hero upgrade ability. Um, it is a rare. It also has no blanks. Um, it has two focus, four different shield sides, one uh, one shield, two shields, three shields, and four shields, and then a two disrupt. Now. Again, I was talking about a Qui-Gon Padme mill control deck that was very difficult to defeat either character. Um, Diplomatic Community is one of those cards that, in, in my mind, that goes in that style deck. Um, the shields from this die can be given to any of your characters distributed as you wish. So, between Diplomatic Community and Force Protection, that's a lot of shields you're going to be divvying out. Um, between Padme and Qui-Gon. And... Yeah, this is, a, this is the type of upgrade that's just... Uh, painful, because your opponent... Every time you roll it, you just, you're just making their health harder and harder to, to get through. Um... This is uh, one of those cards I do expect to see play. Yes, four is a lot, um, but with a rule book rule uh, of uh, for cost reduction, you're early. You're worried about it as it's sort of in the mid game. Being able to swap one, swap uh, one of your cheaper upgrades for this, here is is perfectly fine for it. Um, you don't want to stack too many of the heavy you know the high cost upgrades in your deck but you definitely want some that you can trade out in the mid game and uh, sort of push the advantage and uh, <coughs> expect to see this one in um, yellow based uh, control decks next up we come to Han's uh, favorite weapon his D DL44 heavy blaster pistol uh, so this is a hero upgrade for three. Uh, it has ambush. So obviously Han likes it. Um, it has uh, three different damage sides. Three ranged, three ranged for a resource, and plus two ranged along with um, a resource and two blanks. You know, Han does mess. Um, and the bonus is, after you play this upgrade, force an opponent to choose and remove one of their dice. Um, so, um, again, this, this breaks some of the fundamental rules of the game. Uh, it gives... Um, now the card has ambush, so you get an additional action, and it has an additional trait on top of it of being able to force your opponent to remove one of their dice. To me, this is the type of card that I would put in the category of um, um, a three for one. Uh, Magic talks a lot about card advantage or virtual card advantage. Um, this one is basically taking three actions for the cost of the single card. You get to play the upgrade, it has ambush, you get to force them to remove a die, and then you get your additional action. So the, the card itself is one action, the ambush creates the second action, and then the third action is the removal of the die. So that's three actions on one card. Uh, that's nuts, folks. Oh, and uh, if you're, if you think about it, um, 
although Ray doesn't have any rain sides, you could technically play this on uh, in a Ray Hon deck, play it on Ray, and you're getting four actions. This action, the ambush action, her reaction, and then the, the, the trait. This is another one that I expect to see um, quite a bit of um, use that tempo advantage to just go nuts. Um, Han decks are going to run it, obviously. Um, any of the decks that you, where you can leverage so much off of a single card are going to try to run this. So you don't have to run yellow and whatever uh, you know, whatever combination you want. Um, uh, Han Ray seems to be kind of kind of juicy right now too. So uh, we will certainly see where that goes. But uh, yeah, he's you're going to be blasting a lot. Two blanks is a worry, but having three damage sides, you're more than likely playing this as an aggressive card anyway. Um, with the so anything that's not a damage side is a side you don't want, probably not wanting most of the time. All right, infiltrate is a um, one cost upgrade ability for heroes only. It is uh, a rare. Um, one of the things that you will notice, if it's not a starter deck card, um, if it has a die, it's either a rare or a legendary. Um, so that's one of the things you'll have to... Um, one of the things you will notice, so be aware. Um, so it has um, a a disrupt, a shield, a resource, two um, special sides, and a blank. And the special sides re-roll re re up to two of an opponent's dice. Um, so uh, this is a control upgrade, is what this is. Um, the, um, the cost is minimal of one. That's, you know, you're fine with that. Um, it's good, it basically has three control sides. The disrupt of being able to um, take your opponent's resource, or remove your opponent's resource, and then the reroll of up to two of an opponent's dice. Um, on a permanent, this is a fine effect. Again, you would rather be able to remove your opponent's dice. Uh, that being the first option. Uh, the second option being you would rather uh, change your opponent's dice to a side that you'd want. And third, being able to re-roll their dice. So, I mean, this is a fine effect. Uh, if you're in the market for a control card, this is certainly one that will fit in a, in a hero deck um, where you can... Uh, constantly face you know make your opponent continue to roll their dice until you get a, a you know a side that you want um, not completely excited about it uh, like I said I'm more of an aggressive or combo player um, but it does help control some of your opponent's dice uh, but it's not an upgrade that I would want particularly for one of the two style decks that I would want to play but if you're playing control, I would. This is a card I'd certainly look at and play with because of what it can do to your opponent's plans. All right. Next up, we have um, Black Market. Again, I apologize for the glare. Um, the card costs three. Uh, it is a neutral, rare, support card. Uh, it has um, plus two ranged, two focused, two shields, a resource, and a special, and a blank. The special reads to draw two cards. You may play an upgrade from your hand, decreasing its cost by one. Um, uh, so, red didn't have a 
a ton of affordable support cards um, that um, somebody like General Veers would want to use. Um, this is a this is an interesting card that could fit into uh, that kind of style deck with General Veers and a, some yellow character. Um, since he does a lot with support cards. Um, <clears throat> three, again, is a lot. Uh, I think you can, for a support card, I think with three, though, you can sort of, there are ways to, to gain a single resource so that you're not, uh, you can you can still play it on on that turn and be fine. Uh, when you start getting into four and fives and sixes, that's where we start having to look for op some higher end options to to get to that point. Um, obviously, again, drawing cards is another interesting thought process in this game. Um, How, what black market can do is um, draw you into more upgrades, letting you play more upgrades on your characters for less cost. So eventually, black market can potentially pay for itself. Uh, so there, there is uses here, um, but uh, just thinking. Out loud, this is not a card I've tested. This again, this was a, a card that was spoiled late, um, so haven't had a lot of time to practice with that style of deck. I'm not again, I'm not completely sure where it goes yet. Now this, um, this is this is powerful. So, cunning is a two-cost neutral upgrade ability. Uh, it is a rare yellow character only. Um, it uh, has a focus, a disrupt, a discard, a s resource, a special, and a blank. The special reads resolve a special ability on another card in play as if it were your card. Um, so this is a powerful and flexible upgrade in your rogue decks. Um, uh, this can be a, a card that you want to put in a build around me deck. Um, we were talking about Poe Finn a minute ago. Uh, you can slap a cunning on Finn and give you a, the potential of another use of uh, Poe's special. Um, which is nice, but where, where cunning gets very powerful is a is in a where it is basically a meta card for every deck that has special sides on it particularly some that you're going to see uh, out of blue decks have things like force choke um, immobilize uh, force throw mind probe um, the the lightsabers, um, you know that, you know that, that's a lot. Sith holocron, even I mean, you look at the uh, the upgrade heavy decks that have so many cards with a special side on it. Cunning is a yellow card that's going to see a lot of play. Um, for, 
for one thing it has control sides on it which makes it uh, invaluable to that style deck but being able to either effectively use your own special abilities or your opponent's special abilities is is straight nuts uh, Beb Fortana apparently is worth his weight in gold all right so now we have jetpack this is a um, a neutral rare upgrade equipment for two um, it has uh, two different damage sides plus two ranged and plus three ranged a disrupt two shields a special and a blank the special was remove a die showing melee damage and give attached character one shield um, so we were talking about some heavy damaged um, heavy damage output style decks earlier um, Han for the light side um, who has two different rain sides um, as well as um, Boba Fett for <coughs> the dark uh, for the villain side um, I know during uh, a lot of the early testing we saw a lot of uh, Django I said Boba Fett I knew I was gonna do that um, with Django so because I'm looking at Boba that doesn't help any, me with anything but um, I saw quite a few decks that were wanting that were doing stuff like uh, holdout blaster and jetpacks on Boba Fett or Django. I'm just gonna do that again uh, on Django and going. I dare you to activate your character. <laughs> um, there is a lot of potential damage output from jetpack on another character on a character with range. <coughs> um, specifically, I think really the two decks that I really see this going in um, is Han for the heroes and Phil and uh, Django for the villains um, because of um, their abilities where you can um, where you can have an ambush uh, a Django basically has the built-in ambush effect basically um, lets you activate him after an opponent activates theirs and then you can to resolve one of your dice <coughs> or resolve in this case he could be resolving multiple dice um, and Han is a deck with a lot of ambush effects anyway so um, you'd be able to possibly activate Han and uh, resolve Han uh, so there's a lot of uh, potential damage from this card um, it also has the potential to be very good against melee based decks uh, which is going to be a lot of the force users you're going to see a lot of melee from um, so I can see this also doubling as a card remover or as a die remover um, as well as a card that goes in aggressive decks as well so it's got a lot of power and potential he's got a thermal detonator okay so um, this is a neutral upgrade weapon to legendary it costs three to play and you must spot a yellow character um, it has a one discard a two discard a resource two special size one of which costs a resource and a blank the special side is deal three damage to each of an opponent's characters discard this upgrade from play so it has two different control sides in the one discard and the two discard um, 
which is rather thematic because when you see a thermal detonator, you're probably going to crap your pants if you saw one for real. Um, the blast radius from those was ginormous, by the way. Um, and then the special sides being able to deal three damage to each of an opponent's characters. So it has a potential damage output of 12 damage. Uh, if they're playing the four character start, nine damage on a three character start, and just a, you know six damage on a two character start. Um, so, honestly, this card really has, to me it has double uses. Um, it is a, uh, it can be a control card um, with the discard effects. And it can be an aggressive card to do massive amounts of damage. Now, obviously, you'll get one use out of it, and then it will go to the discard pile. Um, but um, do note there are ways to recover um, upgrades from the discard pile. We, we, we'll get to one of them here in the yellows shortly, and we'll get to um, uh, one in the battlefields if you haven't seen all the cards. So uh, be aware that that does exist. Um, so I really can see this fitting in two different style decks, um, constantly threatening, threatening your opponent, you know, it could blow at any time. And in the meantime, before it blows, you just constantly making them discard cards. All right, now we're into the events and start with Ace in the Hole. Zero resource villain event. Discard a yellow upgrade from your hand to roll its dice into your pool, if able. Set aside that die after it is resolved or removed. Um, so, this is an event that basically lets you play a, um, lets you roll a die from one of your upgrades at the cost of discarding it into your pool and then if your opponent does not mess with that die um, you can resolve it or manipulate it or do whatever you need to um, this is a villain only card so um, you know some of the um, You can just drop something out of, uh, you know, f discard flamethrower, and if you hit the special, okay, sweet, I can multiple, you know, do multiple damage. Thermal detonator, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can drop out of nowhere. Uh, again, um, the rogues do have some sort of uh, uh, upgrade recovery in their uh, in their cards. Uh, so it's uh, something that you'll um, um, something that you uh, can see. So you can use this one turn and then recur that and actually physically play it on something. Um, so it's sort of a surprise. Your opponent thinks that you know they're out of the woods, and then let's say they take the battlefield. And you go, okay, ace in the hole. Um, I'll discard um, uh, crime lord. We'll roll the die into the pool. Oh, I hit the special. Okay, so now I get to get to five resources, and I've got all these actions to get to five resources. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Um, it it's got some interesting um, interesting thoughts. If you're especially if you're short on resources in a turn, and you've got a handful of uh, uh, support cards 
or a handful of upgrade uh, cards that you um, can't play or don't want to discard your you know the ones that are currently on it you can always sneak in uh, some extra uh, some extra stuff for for a single use uh, uh, sort of the the you know, complete surprise which which matches rogues uh, ability for sure okay arm to the teeth so it is a zero cost villain event uh, it's a common discard any number of upgrades from one of your yellow characters then deal damage to a character equal to the number of upgrades you just discarded okay so uh, we in uh, some in the video over the force users I talked about burst damage or um, you know damage that was a complete surprise uh, or massive amounts of damage uh, arm to the teeth can let you uh, basically get in extra, uh, an extra three damage for an event. Uh, now, the problem is you get have to discard any number of upgrades. Um, so there's a lot of cost involved. Not only are you discarding dice from play. Um, but all of those resources that you've spent on those are also end up there. So I'm not quite as big a fan of Arm to the Teeth as I am um, No Mercy or Four Strike or something like that. Um, but it certainly it has potential as um, this is your last character uh, that's in play. Um, or, you know, my character's got, is one damage away from being, uh, from being, uh, killed. I can't stop your die from finishing off my character, but what I can do is any, I can discard any of these upgrades that don't have redeploy on it and deal some damage going out, or I can finish off your character with it. Um... And I think that's the type of use you're going to see used with Arm to the Teeth. Um, to me, this is a card that takes a little bit of skill, um, a little bit of time to set up properly. Uh, but it can get in either the last few points of damage or uh, damage that you normally wouldn't be able to get in because your guy's going to die. Might as well discard some of their upgrades that are not coming, not going over anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. So be aware if you're playing against a villain deck, uh, you could see something like this as sort of a last resort. I'll throw everything but the kitchen sink at you before I die. Confiscation. A zero-cost villain event. Spend resources equal to the cost of an opponent's upgrade in play to return turn that upgrade to their hand. Um... Certainly, I think there needs to be some way to deal with upgrades. Um, so, this has got an interesting flavor to it. Uh, your opponent just spent three or four resources um, for an upgrade on one of their characters, and then they, they pass, uh, of course, they, the action comes to you. Um, you can, you know, return, if you've got the resources, you can return it to their hand. Now, it's not cheap for you either. Um, you're basically spending resources to undo what they did. Um, personally, I would rather, now, while I agree that the idea of making them spend resources and then you spending the same amount of resources to put it back in their hand certainly delays what they're wanting to do but I'm um, which it's also resource stars them um, normally this is the type of card I would be excited about but um, I would rather make sure that the upgrade is 
in the discard pile or elsewhere so I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the game. Um, so right now I'm not really excited about confiscate, uh, confiscation. Um, other than the fact is that it does hit, you know, it does force your opponent to spend resources and then you can spend it to undo their action basically, uh, which can be certainly fine. But I think you're going to have, there's going to be a lot of stuff you want to spend your resources on um, that, in effect, are eventually, that are going to be better than confiscation. Now, if you get to steal their upgrade, th now that, oh, that would be well worth it. Alright, so as the villains do, we're going to, they're going to fight dirty. They're going to, it's a one cost event. So in common, remove any number of your yellow dice. Then deal damage to a character equal to the number of dice you just removed. Um, uh, th again, this is another card that fits into the the burst damage scheme. Um, let's say that you um, <coughs> roll a bunch of dice into your pool. Um, you're playing a mostly yellow deck and you just rolled a bunch of dice into your pool you know you've got five six no, five dice from one character and, and you can roll another character a fully equipped for five dice that's you know ten dice in the pool um, you can literally kill off a character for that even rolling one character would let's say we rolled Boba Fett and he didn't roll very well he didn't hit any of his damage size he got a couple of blanks or whatever um, but he, he rolled as a response to your opponent's roll so you go okay I'll pay one and fight dirty I'll remove those five dice and you know, deal five damage to that character you know that's that's huge when you're able to deal that much damage, even on bad rolls. Um, so, um, again, this is another villain aggressive card that I like going in those aggressive style decks. Um, I expect to see a fair amount of this. Uh, go for the kill. Resolve one of your dice showing range damage, treating this damage as unblockable. So, it, um, this villain card, it is obviously, <coughs> um, it's a, normally, you would not want a card like this in your deck. Now, the only reason I say that, um, is because you can resolve a die normally without needing a card. Um, the to me this is a meta specific deck specific card that goes in uh, a field where you're facing a lot of decks that build up a ton of shields and you're wanting to make sure that damage gets through and you don't have to worry about the shields. Um, so if you realize that your meta is shield heavy, this is a card you probably want to look at at helping you get through shields, uh, if at all possible. Um, otherwise, I feel like it could be wasted uh, in a in a normal deck, uh, but as a meta card, it's it's great. He doesn't like you. Um, so this is a zero cost villain event. Remove one of your dice to remove an opponent's die. This is simple and efficient. Um, obviously when you roll your dice you would rather uh, them you, you roll well. Uh, it's not something you're not going to roll well all the time. Heck you could roll three or four times and not get, get something well. Um, so um, you also need a way to remove your opponent's dice. Um, again, personally, with dice removal, I would rather it be 
spot a character one of my characters to remove an opponent's die or um, you know I would rather not have to remove one of my dice to do this but this is uh, effective in yellow um, to remove a particular die from the pool uh, say like a uh, you know to go with some uh, an at set or a um, uh, a grievous die, a Vader die, a force choke. You know, and there's any number of dice that you want to remove from the pool. Crime Lord. You just don't want that die resolving. You don't want them even attempting it again. So you're like, okay, now this guy rolled a blank. I'll I'll just remove this die and I'll remove that die and we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the turn. Lying in wait. A one cost villain event. Force an opponent to choose and discard cards from their hand down to the number of cards you have in your hand. Um, so I'm, um, this is a card I've not had a chance to play with. Uh, even though it was one of the ones that were spoiled very, fairly early. Um, I can see situations where this could be, you know, massive. You could be forcing them to discard two or three cards, and I can see somewhere you're where it's sitting in your hand, hoping that you get to that point where you can use it. Um, Personally, I would think that this would be better served as a somewhat of a control card in maybe an aggressive deck where you're burning through your hand very quickly. And maybe your, plant, your opponent's playing control and doesn't hasn't played as many cards from hand and you can get a you know, massive swing off of it. Um, but... Um, I haven't attempted a sort of I haven't attempted a mill style strategy on the on the villain side, so I'm not completely sure where this where this would fit right now. If this was a light side card, um, I could uh, think I could try to fit it in uh, one of the mill strategy decks, but as a dark side, I, I mean villain side, I don't know. All right, backup muscle is a one cost support for villains um, it is a common after you play the support place three damage on it exhaust the support to move one damage from it to a character it this ignores shields um, this support is absolutely amazing uh, you're paying one resource to deal three damage over three turns uh, to another character uh, it ignores shields and it is um, it's powerful for what for what it does uh, yes it it takes time to get the three damage onto the other character uh, but it helps you slowly whittle away at a character I think this to me this is a, again is an aggressive deck style card uh, to help you with burst damage and I also think you can put it in a control deck so you while you're slowly grinding your strategy you can um, put damage on a, on characters that are fully shielded up that you might not be able to get to normally and get them in a scenario that they eventually got to start working in um, you know what's uh, what am I gonna do he's you know he's dealt six damage to me and I hadn't even got an attack through my kind of scum this is a one cost villain support when you resolve a die showing disrupt you may exhaust the support to gain resources equal to the number of resources your opponent just lost
So, um, uh, I'm going to be honest, I, this is not a card I've tested. Um, stealing resources seems like a very OP ability. Um, controlling resources is, again, very powerful as well. Um, I think really to be able to make a card like this work, you would need a lot of cards with the disrupt symbol uh, to maximize your chances of being able to steal resources. Um, and then again, you would need a a a high end payoff card, something like maybe Crime Lord um, that costs four and then five resources to um, you know axe a character. Um, so, you know, this to, this to me f only fits in this particular strategy. I don't know if you can really splash this uh, in, a, in certain decks and get the uh, a max maximum effectiveness of it, considering the number of cards that, um, you know, you only have a limited number of, of space for cards in a 30-card deck. Um, so... Uh, we shall see, but um, I put this I put this more in a control shell myself. All right, underworld connections. This is a two cost villain support. Uh, it's an uncommon as an action. Exhaust the support to gain a resource. <coughs> so. This is the type of uh, card that pays for itself over time. Um, you can play it on uh, the first turn or an early turn. Uh, you can exhaust it to immediately gain one resource. So you've already it's already paid your it's it's basically cost one at that point, and then the next turn it produces. A second resource so it's paid for itself and then every other uh, every other turn it um, it starts netting you resources um, so it is a little bit slow but it certainly helps you uh, pay for cards that are more in the more expensive realm of um, your deck uh, and helps you net uh, positive resources over time. Uh, I like the card. Uh, again, space is going to be an issue, but I certainly like what it does and tries to do. Uh, and if you get mul multiple out, then you know you're uh, doubling up on extra resources each turn. So, next up is the unique prize possession. is a villain uncommon that costs four. When you play this upgrade, you may remove a, a, an opponent's character die and place it here. It is not rolled by any character and does not return to its character unless the upgrade leaves play. So this fits into the control theme of... Um, of the rogues, the yellows. Um, basically, um, locking up a character while prize possessions in play. I think if you are playing a villain control deck in yellow, that this is a this is a card that you want. Um, there's, we've got, I definitely think there's some rules questions involved in this. If the character's elite, do I get both of their dice? Uh, I guess it really doesn't matter because they can't roll it. Um, can the character still activate and roll its other dice? I mean, there are a lot of rules questions with this. Um, 
I would have probably said something like, um, uh, exhaust target character and remove all dice from that character and all uh, up attached upgrades. The character cannot ready while prize possession is in play. So certainly I think there's some wording issues on this. Um, but being able to lock a character out of combat is great. I just uh, think it could be worded a little differently than this. Alright, don't get cocky. So it's a hero event for zero resources. A common, each player draws two cards. Okay, so I was trying to... Now, normally I don't like my opponent drawing cards off of my of my cards. Uh, but again, I think in a mill strategy, um, having them dig two cards deeper and then me forcing them to discard uh, cards from their hand or cards from the top of their deck is uh, can be a fine strategy. Now, there is a danger to this card. Uh, but um, uh, I th obviously since your opponent gets to draw two cards and they get the next action then um, it can backfire on you um, there are certain cards in other games like Magic the Gathering that <coughs> allows uh, like Howling Mine that uh, at the beginning of each player's upkeep they get to draw an additional card they get to draw a card uh, but s since you have to play it on your turn your opponent gets the next upkeep so they get to draw the card before you get to draw one so uh, they get to see an additional card before you uh, in this game both players get to see the same number of cards the problem is you have expended a card to do this and your opponent gets the next action so this can certainly backfire. Um, I'm not totally sold on it. Uh, Mill is the only, uh, and hand control decks are the only decks that I have attempted this in. And um, there have been times it backfired. So uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, draw attention. This is a common hero event for zero resources. Move up to two damage from one of your characters to another one of your characters. This ignores shields. So again, this is another protection card. Um, being able to move damage from uh, from one character to another is useful, so you can sort of spread where the damage is. Um, again, this is another card that I've put in my uh, Qui-Gon Padme mill deck where I can move damage off of Padme onto Qui-Gon um, or vice versa depending on who's been beat up the worst um, usually it's Padme to Qui-Gon because Qui-Gon is going to be stacked with shields all the time but um, moving damage around and especially if you're running multiple characters is a very um, useful ability um, it works fine even in um, even although in aggressive decks you would rather have more cards that are pushing more damage through um, this is a fine card in just in most control strategies um, Certainly, it's so far it's been wor well worth the slots that I've used for it. Hyperspace Jump. So this is a three-cost hero event. Reads, end the action phase. You may switch the battlefield with, a, with the battlefield that is not currently being used. So, <coughs> Hyperspace Jump is a unique card very flavorful but a very unique card um, in the fact that um, uh, 
um, <coughs> it does two unique things. <coughs> First of all, it ends the action phase. So it says, nope, nobody gets to resolve any more actions this phase. Number two, um, it lets you switch the battlefield. Now, uh, three costs for an event is, is a lot. I guess that's one reason the Millennium Falcon can... Um, use a special to play an event for free um, and then jump to hyperspace um, um, but personally where I see this card is you may switch the battlefield with the battlefield that's not being used uh, okay so this is a card if you have designed your deck with your battlefield in mind you wanted your battlefield you didn't win the, the, the role your opponent was afraid to let you have your battlefield so they started with yours this is a card that allows you to switch the battlefield uh, so like uh, with a with a mill deck uh, one of the cards uh, has a claim ability that uh, lets you mill cards off the top of uh, each opponent's deck um, which is in in this specific deck that I'm running uh, I think it's uh, command cent uh, central command center um, if I don't get it it's no big deal because I can use hyperspace jump to sort of go okay you just rolled a massive amount of damage I don't want to take it you started with the battlefield, so I can just end the phase, put my battlefield on the table, and uh, things get hairy. Because uh, not only have I stopped a bunch of damage, but I've also switched to my battlefield, and things are going to get interesting now. Um, I think that's one of the reasons it costs three, is because it co it's combining two powerful effects into one. Um... I expect control decks will look at this card and I expect decks that want to use their battlefield to build their deck around their battlefield uh, if they want to have one of the characters as yellow to use to look at this card um, I would say that um, It will mostly be used in control builds, but I could com be completely wrong, and it wouldn't be the first time. Let the Wookiee win. So this is a hero event that costs one. Force an opponent to choose to either deal one of their exhausted characters' damage, or choose and remove two of their dice. Um, so, there are obviously two choices on this card. Your opponent gets to make both of these card, both of these choice, either of these choices. It doesn't afford you as much control as you would like. Um, in some games, these uh, cards that we list in the damned if you do, damned if you don't uh, areas uh, are difficult to judge. I think this is one of those um, that, um, uh, again, player skill is going to determine whether this is a good card or if this is a bad card. Uh, to me, it's all about timing when playing a card that gives your opponent tough decisions. If you play it at the correct time, the decision that they make is going to be wrong either one they make. If you play it at the wrong time, then they can basically take the lesser of the two evils and not really be hurt by it. 
Uh, this is another one that I didn't have a great scan of. It is Negotiate. It um, costs one resource for it's a hero event and a common. Remove one of your character dice to force an opponent to choose and remove two of their dice. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, earlier we had um, um, oh, we saw it doesn't like you. where they could remove one of their dice to remove one of your dice. Um, negotiate, to me, doesn't really seem like a hero card. I mean, we've got a one guy pointing a blaster at another guy saying, you're going to listen or else. Um, but it definitely does fit the rogue mantra. Um, this will cost you one of your character dice, and your opponent gets will get to choose which two dice he's removing. Um, but that being said, you're trading one of your cards and a dice to, to get your opponent to remove two of their dice. Um, this is, a, again, another type of card that you are going to have to pack some number of in your deck uh, to control your opponent. Uh, and it's, it's going to take, a, there's going to be some, a feeling out process for each uh, for each deck, which of these effects are you packing and which of these effects are you choosing to leave in your uh, in your trade binder? Um, if you're playing a yellow hero style deck, uh, this is a fine option. Uh, if you're mixing some of the other colors in, um, there might be better options. Um, but being able to remove multiple dice with an action is still quite powerful. Yeah, it's something I would certainly consider even if I was playing yellow and either red or blue. So next up is Scavenge. Scavenge. It is a hero event that costs zero. Uh, discard the top three cards of your deck, then you may add an upgrade or support from your discard pile into your hand. So, um, uh, this is the yellow card I was speaking about where you can recover upgrades or supports. Um, and it's a hero only card, so it, it kind of fits the uh, Poe Finn style deck where you can mill three cards off and recur one of the big. Um, uh, you know, big bombs that you were dropping with Poe. Um, uh, there are, there is a battlefield that also allows you to, when you claim it, uh, put an uh, an upgrade on top of your of your deck uh, as well. Uh, so the 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 discarding the top three cards is definitely a cost in a game that you can lose if you don't have any cards left in hand or deck. Uh, so it's it's certainly dicey. Um, yeah, the good news is it does give you some way to return specific upgrades or supports that you may have had to lose for whatever reason back to your hand to get them back into play. Um, yeah. Again, to me, this 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 doesn't fit. I don't think it fits in every deck. Um, simply because the the cost of a card plus three more off the top of your deck may be too much. Um, if especially if you're playing a long controlish game. So shoot first. This is a hero card, so we finally have an answer after almost 40 years of who shot first. This is a hero card that says shoot first, so Han did the shooting. So this argument is over, okay? <laughs> um, as you see Greedo getting, um, 
getting blasted. Uh, it is a one cost event. Uh, it's an uncommon. It has ambush. And you get to resolve one of your yellow dice showing range damage. Then remove an opponent's die showing range damage. So again, this is another card that allows you to essentially take multiple actions. Um, you get to resolve one of your dice with range damage as one action. You get to remove an opponent's die showing range damage as, the, as a second action. And then as the third action is the one you play after you play this card. So again, this is another three actions for one card effect. It is better in a metagame full of range damage. Um, but even collaterally, you'll some decks are going to have some range damage uh, and some melee damage because we only currently have one set. So um, if you're if they're unable with their card pool to build a straight melee damage or straight range damage deck, they may have some of each anyway. Uh, so even at resolve one of your yellow dice showing a range damage and take an additional action, it's a card that you probably want for your uh, hero deck, especially uh, aggressive hero decks. So up next is Smuggling, a zero-cost hero event. It's a common spot a yellow character and discard a card from your hand to gain a resource. So while I, in the uh, review of the Force user cards, um, I personally liked Enrage as a way to gain extra resources. I'm not quite as high on smuggling as I am enraged. With smuggling, you have to deal with a character damage um, to gain a resource, and you're playing the playing the card from your hand. Smuggling, you have to spot a yellow character, uh, discard a card to gain a resource. So you're essentially losing two cards for a resource. Um, I'm not quite as high on it as I am enraged. Um, enraged downside is uh, a damage. Its upside is, oh, I just hit a shield. So, uh, and it, it did cost a card. Um, or smuggling cost you two cards. So that's less cards that you have in, in your hand to deal stuff with. Um, that being said, if you're playing a deck that is more high cost cards, or if you're playing um, you're trying to get up to a certain amount of resources so that you can do things like with hired guns um, this may be a perfectly fine card for you this is something currently I'm gonna set aside and say I'm not really sure if this is the the card that I want uh, market wise um, this however is uh, uh, a card that I am in the market for. Uh, so Watto wants us to play the odds. It is a one cost support card for heroes. Uh, as an action, exhaust the support to reroll one of your yellow dice. If it rolls a resource, gain a resource. So it has a built-in uh, reroll ability similar to the power of the dark side for for the force users um, for this one <coughs> reroll a yellow dice so you get a reroll and if you happen to hit a resource you gain an additional resource so this to me is more all-purpose than say smuggling uh, with this being a support it's something once it's in play unless your opponent can deal with it uh, you have a very you have a recursive way to re-roll dice uh, without having to spend extra cards in hand. And if you happen to hit a resource, you also gain additional resources. Um, this is a perfect um, 
win-win type card uh, for me and we all know when you're playing the odds that if you're playing you know well, we can turn a die to any side it doesn't really matter does it okay straight in formats so this is a zero cost support for heroes it is a common it has ambush and it has the action exhaustive support to look at an opponent's hand now I've always thought that information was critical in games um, this is a card that I'm very torn on it it's cost zero it's essentially free and it uh, it's a support where you can constantly look at your opponent's hand but that does cost you an action you don't get anything out of your opponent's hand which is the bad part um, the only reason I look at a card like this is the ambush keyword because obviously it lets you string mul multiple actions together um, and so the only deck I could think of particularly that would be in the market for this amb this card is is the Han deck and it's only because of ambush um, certainly I would like to know what is in your hand um, if this were an event that read um, that was zero cost um, ambush uh, look at your opponent's hand I would consider I, I would say that that would be more includable than this would simply because I got to see your hand and now I can plan out the rest of my I can play I can plan out the rest of my turn. I can play more ambush cards and start chaining actions together. Um, I can, I know what, uh, having to play this as a support, gain the additional action, and then have to exhaust it to look at the opponent's hand, turns it off for me as far as uh, a card that I could use uh, aggressively properly. second chance so this is a three cost hero upgrade ability uh, it is an uncommon yellow character only before attached character would be defeated instead heal five damage from it and discard this upgrade from play um, so uh, this is one of those cards uh, if you're playing a um, a deck in which you have to have a yellow character stay in play, um, this is certainly a card you'd want to run one of, uh, for certain. Uh, let's say the Padme Qui-Gon deck I was talking about. This is a card that you could drop on Amidala when she's about dead and go, Okay, kill me. I dare you. I'm just I'm just gonna heal five damage, keep all my upgrades on me except this one, and um, we're gonna keep slugging this out till I mill you to death. Um, it's um, it's fantastic because it it basically says okay we're we'll put the character back into play at half health or whatever. Um, Obviously, it's flavorful for Finn since he's the one that crashed the TIE Fighter on uh, Jakku. Or crashed the pot on Jakku, I should say. But, um, so, yeah, he got he kind of got out of there. But, um, again, I think this is uh, one of those cards that you are probably not running two of. Uh, unless you're running a, a, a deck that is all yellow, it's all rogue on the hero side. Um, but it's one of those that says, I'm I'm ultra protected, even if you finally get the last point of damage on me, we're healing five and, and we're going to continue on. So, 
Um, again, this is another one that I'm, I apologize about the quality of the card. It's Disarm. It is a neutral common event for one resource. Resolve one of your dice showing damage to discard a weapon or equipment from play that equals to as equal to or less than the value of that die. So when I said that I would like to remove um, certain upgrades in play, most of the ones that um, uh, most of the ones that you're that you can target are going to be weapons up or and up and or upgrades. Um, Disarm is one of those cards that's very good for that. Now it's only, you know, it's only going to, for the most part, it's it's going to deal with cards that cost zero, one, or two. Um, there are a few guys there, you know, a couple that have a three damage side. Uh, they can deal with a three cost uh, weapon or equipment. But you're not going to be able to deal with anything more than that. Because it says remove one of your dice with that side showing. And currently the only card with a four with four damage uh, on the uh, on either side is the flamethrower. Uh, still this is a, a card in those type of um, uh, decks or strategies where you want to remove certain uh, weapons or equipment off a card that this is a card that wants to go in your deck. Uh, again, I'm not sure that it is um, a card you'd want in every deck because there's no way to guarantee that you will be able to play this uh, when you need it. Uh, but almost every deck is going to have some sort of upgrades. Uh, so uh, it's definitely something to look into. All right, so this is Electroshock. It is a neutral event that costs one. It is an uncommon. Spot a yellow character to remove a die showing a value of two or lower. So as far as dice removal, um, Electroshock is the spot a character yellow character to remove a die or remove most all dice um, again blanks and specials count as zero uh, everything else has a vase value whether it's one plus one two plus two etc so the only ones it doesn't deal with is three plus three and four and and five so there's there but there's not that many fours and there's not that many fives uh, the three is the only one that's a real pain uh, so this, for the most part, will deal with most all of the dice that you're going to see in normal games. And this one is, since you get to pick the die, is slightly better than some of the other ones. Um, but you're more than likely you're going to have to you're going to have to mix this card with one of the other two for the side that you're playing. And negotiate on the hero side he doesn't like you on the dark side or villain side reversal three uh, three cost neutral event spot a yellow character to remove a die showing damage and deal that damage to a character so this card is his uh, Probably the most powerful damage removal card uh, that we've seen. Uh, there's a reason that it costs three. Um, if you can afford to play a card like this in your deck, removing a die that's showing damage and then dealing it back to that character is a huge, huge swing. Um, you know, you're swinging. Um, Two damage that would be dealt to to your character, to two damage that would be dealt to one of your to your opponent's character. You know that's four damage worth of, sw of swing. And there's a reason it costs three. Um, 
I'm questioning how much uh, or how many copies you'd want to run in a deck because you're not going to have three very often uh, unless you have a lot of winners to manipulate resources. Um, but it, uh, if you can get yourself in those scenarios a lot, that's, um, that's a card to fear. Uh, even more than say deflection on from the from the uh, from the force users. So scramble is a zero cost neutral common event. It is uh, reads spot a other character to reroll all of an opponent's dice. Um, so this forces multiple rerolls at the cost of a single card, and spotting a yellow character. Um, uh, Rerolls are fine if you are trying to control an opponent and you've run out of other cards that uh, remove dice or manipulate dice. Um, so, um, right now that it if you've used up all those other slots and you want to play more control cards this may be something you're in the market for um, I hope your opponent rolls rolls crappy and you, and you can be fine you know um, it's a fine option it's uh, nothing to write home about um, but um, it'll be um, it'll be one you will see used especially for the first uh, several months of the game if they're if they don't have any if they're playing yellow only and they've filled up their other slots and want more control cards so unpredictable uh, is this an ambush uh, event it costs zero it is a neutral it has ambush and you can um, uh, you can uh, reroll a die yours or your opponent's um, having the ambush um, uh, keyword makes this one a little better between that and the ability that you can reroll any person's die you can always reroll one of your dice and then immediately resolve it uh, so it can be used aggressively as well as defensively um, and you still get an additional action so for me, even though the scramble affects more dice, I would rather have a card like this for the tempo advantage uh, that it can uh, produce. So this next card is Infamous. It is a one cost neutral support. It is an uncommon. Before you play a yellow card, you may exhaust the support to give it the ambush keyword. Um, that's a lot of additional actions. That's a lot of additional actions. You can effectively, um, if both of these are in play, you can effectively give yourself two additional actions a turn. And that's some scary tempo. Uh, again, space, deck space is going to be a question. Um, do you have enough cards to take advantage of a card like this? Um, uh, if you're basing your deck around Han Solo, I would think that you would probably want to play a card like this. Um, If you're a um, mono yellow deck or mono rogue deck, this type of effect uh, of giving you additional actions uh, allows that tempo swing uh, that we talk about um, taking control of a game through multiple actions before your opponent can respond. A 
I would my aggressive decks definitely want this um, in a mostly yellow or heavy yellow deck um, this is just a beating and the last rogue card in the awakening set is hunker down it is an upgrade ability it is neutral common and it costs zero if attached character takes melee damage discard this upgrade action exhaust this upgrade to give attached character one shield so there is a lot to like about this card um, the only way your opponent um, the easiest way for your opponent to deal with hunker down is to deal it deal with character melee damage um, and uh, most of your melee damage is in um, uh, is in uh, force users and even if they do have melee damage as long as it hits shields and it doesn't actually hit the character then hunker down stays in play now granted it does take an up an, uh, an upgrade slot you're only allowed three upgrades and this one doesn't come with a dice so um, it's um, it's a card that is um, definitely taking one of those upgrade slots so you have to be wary of that but it is a very good defensive card uh, again this is another way uh, that I give uh, Qui-Gon and Padme shields in that mill control deck um, so um, uh, be aware it is uh, it makes uh, it makes it very difficult to uh, to get through with all these shields <coughs> so that is we've come to the end of the review of the uh, rogue or yellow cards for uh, Star Wars Destiny's Awakening set uh, you can find us uh, at Colot uh, and underscore informant on Twitter our webpage is coladinformant.com. You should see a, an info link in the upper right-hand corner of the screen that will take you to the website. Um, the Black Sun Syndicate division is um, a division of the Colad Informant Information Network uh, based solely on the uh, Star Wars Destiny uh, card and dice game. Um, uh, so until next time, may the Force be with you.